there's probably two words in your head that are a little bit fuzzy. Position and displacement. They both have to do with where you are. And position is where you are with respect to a coordinate system. So you set a zero marker. Let's say it's this bench right here. So right now I'm one step away, two steps away, three steps away. If I just say Dad's at three steps, that doesn't mean anything unless we think back to the bench. That being said, we also have displacement, which is how much your position changes. And sometimes in physics, that's actually more important than position where you actually are. I think these three problems can explain it. They're nearly identical. So I thought I'd do the first one as a review, and then I'll just show you the answer to the second one. The third one has a lot less information. And we'll see that maybe an alternate form of our uh, constant velocity equation might be more appropriate for answering it. So let's just do this one together the familiar way. Ibram runs from the 100 meter mark to the 300 meter mark in 31 seconds. How fast is he going? So we'll do what we usually do, we'll write down every number. Meters must be a position. Meters must be a position. Seconds must be a time. One of our two positions must be the original one, and of course it's that one. So we just take our equation and plug in. So now we'll subtract over the 100. So we get 200 equals 31V. And we'll divide by 31. And if we do that, we get V is 6.45. So that problem solved, not so bad. Let's do the second one. It's almost exactly the same, except now Ibram's not starting on the 100 meter mark, he's starting on the zero. Um, I won't make you watch that again, I'll just show you the answer. Pow. So we get the same answer. And what's really crucial here to notice is that although he started in a different place both times, he still went 200 meters of displacement. 100 to 300, 0 to 200, the displacement's both 200. So this subtraction here, 300 minus 100, is what gave us what we, what we had when we started at zero. So displacement actually ends up being more important than where you are. So sometimes it's nicer to write this equation in terms of displacement rather than position. So I'd like to show you how to do that. So when we first started studying motion, we put you at a starting line, an original position. We had you walk at constant velocity with a certain speed. The very act of you orienting yourself and collecting that data required you to determine a coordinate system, an original position, and then how fast you went determined how quickly your position changed from that. So that's hard to see on the video, so you'll have a copy of this photo if you want it. But this graph, which hopefully is familiar, is just a graph of a straight line. The intercept is the place we start, and the slope is how fast position changes. So y equals mx plus b, that's actually just our equation we've been using. This form of the equation we like because it directly shows you where you started and how fast you're going. And it's also really clearly y equals mx plus b. So it shows you that this isn't new math. It's stuff you already know how to do. So I'm really partial to this form of the equation. But not every physics teacher agrees with me. And you're going to be using materials not just from me, but from other teachers, from online course providers, from textbooks. And they really want to hit the point that it didn't matter 
whether the runner started at position zero or position 100, but it was their displacement that was important. So they have a form of this equation that means the same thing, but written a little differently. So I just want to show you their form of the equation. All they do, quick little rearrangement, they subtract XO over to the other side, just like we did in the pr first problem. So you have X minus XO is V. And I'm going to do T minus T original too. That might look a little weird, but if we're saying our position is changing from XO to some final place, our time is really changing from time original to some final time. And of course, that's just zero because our original time was zero. So this form of the equation really emphasizes that we're talking about displacement, the change in position. And because we get lazy and we don't want to write this change all the time, we have an abbreviation for it. We use a Greek letter, the Greek letter delta. So this could be written like this. So if you've never seen delta before, that might look a little scary, but the nice thing about it is it always means the same thing. Delta anything just means the final version of that thing minus the original version of that thing. So usually you'll see it with letters. You can get ridiculous here, but if you ever see that symbol, it's a subtraction. Kind of scary looking, but it's just so we don't have to keep writing out the negative signs and all that stuff. You see it like this, this means displacement is velocity times time. And we know it's a displacement, a change, because that's our abbreviation for a final minus original. Literally any time you see delta, it means final minus original. So this form of the equation, we can add it in here too. You'll always have both. Whichever one you want to use is fine. Look how easy the problem is if we think in terms of displacement rather than position. Ibram runs 200 meters in 31 seconds. How fast is he going? Who cares where he started? It didn't matter. The question is about his, his velocity. So we don't have two positions anymore. We just have a displacement. So if that equation still looks unfamiliar, it's actually super similar to something you probably learned in middle school the simple equation velocity equals distance over time. Algebraic rearrangement distance equals velocity times time. That's actually what we're looking at here. It's just that we're not really talking about distance, we're talking about displacement. And we leave the deltas out in junior high so we don't scare people. So this is one place I don't like this equation because I feel like physics students are often um, wanting to use that simple V equals D over T. I feel like the original equation we taught you is a little bit better because it reminds you that this is a model. And it's a model of a straight line. Both of these equations only work if we have a constant slope on our x versus t graph. In other words, if we were going constant speed. So which do you use? I honestly could care less. They mean the exact same thing. I want you to be comfortable knowing that they are the same. I want you to know that delta means final minus original. And whichever one works in the problem for you, I'm not mad. You'll be seeing both as we go.